The work of public servants is a great example of constraint aiding creativity. With budgets slashed, departments merged and jobs lost, those remaining have been forced to find new ways to serve the people of Australia. And there are some great examples. The New South Wales Department of Premier and Cabinet increased on-time payments by $10 million a year by changing two simple words. Unpaid fine, instead of enforcement order, is on the heading of their infringements. DPC's Behavioural Economics Unit came up with this idea, which also saves taxpayers an extra $4 million a year in outstanding penalties. Transport for New South Wales wanted a nap for Sydney commuters wanting to know when the next train or bus was arriving. Instead of a lengthy and costly tender, PwC offered to execute a hackathon which gave birth to the real-time GPS tracker in TripView, which now has over a million downloads. And the Federal Government's Innovation Month sees hundreds of great minds come together trying to push boundaries and generate ideas in a sector not well known for its agility or creativity. As someone who works closely with public servants, I'm continually inspired by their intelligence, resilience and proactive work in times of adversity, and this is that time. To take a pulse check of the public service under pressure, I sat down with two of the most respected department heads in the Australian Government and asked for their thoughts on the economy, productivity and of course innovation. Here is a small sample of our conversation, which you can see in full on PwC's website. I thought it was interesting when I came in and asked how many consultation committees do we have, no one really knew. So they went away and came back a couple of weeks later and said we've got 68. So there were 68 committees ongoing that mostly met four times a year that had 1,494 external participants wow. on those committees holding over 230 meetings a year. Well to my mind that was an industry, I don't want that, I, I, I actually want more specific short-term consultation. And it's an interesting challenging issue for me because I get asked within government and I'm an advocate for industry and industry portfolio or am I there providing more objective view in terms of policy development and in a sense it's both. I think you can't have informed policy without working in partnership. I think it's an incredibly important thing for us to declutter our over-engineered uh, processes internally to put in place a proper risk management framework rather than always trying to eliminate all risk because you can never eliminate risk mm -hmm. but gee you can tie yourself up trying to on those last little bits. With the 115 different programs we had little buckets of money so everyone loved us. Mm. Now we haven't got those buckets of money and those discretionary grants so what is the service offer? And I think um, individuals within the department are looking at what is the service we can provide whether that's market and industry information, uh, access to supply chains, connections with Austrade for example, are looking at opportunities for deregulation, bringing those researchers and businesses together. I think too often policies are developed, uh, approved by Cabinet and then there may be some consultation on some implementation issues. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's probably too late. You need that private sector, expert, confidential input before the final policy settings and framework are actually sort of uh, uh, done and dusted. The growth rate of um, Australia's economy has been pretty important through the financial crisis, uh, the global financial crisis. So I see that as a, um, a really big um, uh, achievement for the economy. I think there's a lot in better risk profiling of people, there's a lot in further work in data analytics and predictive analytics to work out who typically will comply and therefore offer them a better service offering, but making it correspondingly harder through the use of that same data and same analytic capability for those who are likely not to comply. One of the things I learnt from one of my Canadian colleagues was that um, hierarchy can be a blocker to innovation. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing about empowering people on the ground and younger people in, the, in, the, in our agencies to come up with good ideas and different ways of working?
Uh, the thing right now um, has to be around international tax issues. Uh, there is a significant threat to the corporate tax base. Looking at how do we absolutely ensure there's no youth unemployment or minimal youth unemployment and in some areas it's, it's up around 30% mm. in some areas, which is quite worrying mm. when you think this is the workforce that's supporting uh, the economy.